this is the best printer that you're gonna get for $250 in the market. I bought six of them because I like it. For my review, I'm gonna look at things that I would have liked to have known or what I look for before I purchase a printer like this. I usually think, quality, so whether that's quality of machine, then I look at the power consumption. And then I look at the size, the overall size of the machine, the build plate size, and look at the setup. What's the setup going to be like? How long does it take to put together? Where I have to build the entire thing? And the last thing I always look at, at is price. Now I understand for most of you, price is probably gonna be one of the first things on the menu. So I understand price can be a big thing, but let's go look at quality. The standard quality of the machine does not vary from machine to machine. I've noticed some printer brands, I, when I buy a printer, I buy multiple. I've noticed that some machines differ in the quality that they are made with. Their quality control is not well. For this printer, I have bought six and so far, the only difference I've ever seen with the printer is the build plate. The build plate had a different logo. All these ones have the standard Bamboo Lab logo, and my first machine didn't have a logo. It was just a gold PEI texture build plate. Which brings me into the parts that they use on this machine are of quality. It has a stainless steel nozzle. It has a textured PEI build plate. It has a camera. It has a digital screen. You can print from your phone with a Bamboo Handy app. When I'm looking at a quality machine, I would like to know that it's easy to work with and not when it breaks, you have to throw it away and replace it. That doesn't show me quality and craftsmanship. When something goes wrong on this, every part you can buy on Bamboo Labs website. So if something goes wrong, you can replace it very easily. They have Wikipedia web pages all for replacement. And when you look at the machine parts, this does not run on those uh, rubber Z wheels. This uses a stainless steel bar, and that is why it's so quiet. And it stays within a better uh, tolerance zone because the stainless steel is not gonna wear like one of those wheels. And what I'd like to say for the quality of this machine is I've ran many hours on this, and I've I'm pretty sure collectively thousands of hours across my machines. And the most I've had to do is replace the uh, extruder wheel because I use glow in the dark filaments, which is very abrasive. I've had to replace the stainless steel hot end. We've looked at the quality aspect. Second thing that I look at when I go to buy a printer is power consumption. That my electric bill running six of these A1 minis full time is around $100. And I'm going to be displaying the power consumption on screen maybe around here. And so far I've been able to put six A1 minis without tripping the breaker. And that's important to me because that means I can have more machines running, which makes me more money. Before I get into my next point, I would like to say, this is like my second printer review video. I do not really make long form content. You probably know me from my shorter form content. I am trying, I am trying to learn. Please comment down below like what I should touch on. I can redo the reviews or answer these questions post in the comments as well. I am planning on making more videos like this. So if this is something that you find helpful, please like and subscribe. I do run a print farm. I'm active with these printers on social media. I have had about 22 printers in the past year from sponsorships and just because I bought them. But I've ran a lot of printers. That's why I'm doing a review on what I would like to see and what I like to purchase printers based on so I understand that's different for people so let's get back to it I then worry about the setup of the printer I do not like like I've said earlier having a Lego set of a printer that may be fun for some enthusiasts but that's not me I am someone that had a mechanical background in college I don't find it enjoyable putting things together anymore I got this into as a as a hobby and then it turned into a job. I do not like spending my hours putting together printers. And this is why this one's great. Out of the box, it only takes about 15 to 20 minutes, even if you don't know what you're doing. Most of the machine is put up. You just pull out the machine and it's ready to go. The spool holder in the back over here, that is something you screw on. The cutter here, that you screw on. And then I believe there are some screws that you tighten up, like on the build plate, a few other things I believe. But besides that, you just plug it in. It takes five minutes, seven minutes, and 15. So you're looking around 27 minutes for 
your machine to calibrate and set up before you print. One hour maybe before you get your first print down if you want everything to come out well. That's huge. I remember setting up my Ender, or Ender 3, yeah, my Ender 3, and it took me two days to set up before I could even get a print, before I could get a successful print. This is already printing a Benchy for you guys. And we'll look at that shortly. If you guys are watching this, I'm gonna, I have a script right here because uh, I'm new to taking long form videos. And I think final piece before I go to buy or make a decision about the printer. And that's price. And like I've said before, this is probably a point that would be first on many people's list. This machine, I believe, started out at $300 when it was first released last year in 2023. Since then, it's dropped $50 you have the option to buy it with an AMS or without an AMS. I have two with AMSs, I'll cut to that, and then I have four without AMSs. And if I'm looking at the price for 250, there are many printers in the 200 to $300 price range. You got your Neptunes, you got your Anycubics, and some Creality printers. I believe the KE, the SE, your uh, Cobra 2s, those are all fine prints. However, they lack quality. They don't have the status that Bamboo Labs has. And overall, the accessibility of those printers for $200 to $300 is not great. And what I mean by accessibility is this has an assistant on here. It goes to the help screens. When you're lost with a Creality printer, you're lost. You got to turn to the internet and uh, the internet can be a wild west. This will help you, this will guide. Yes, you get a smaller print bed. You get the ease of experience. I've had the Anycubic Cobra too. A lot of people disregarded me and didn't like my review video on it because I was blatantly truthful about it. I did not like it for the money I spent, which was like 220 at the time, it sucked. So for 250, this is the cheapest Bamboo Lab printer you're gonna get. It has the quality of expensive Bamboo Lab printers and you get the, the status, you get the Bamboo Lab printer. What I think people are going to be looking at for the price of this machine is like, what can I print for 200 or for a $250 machine? You're going to be able to print most useful things that you want to print, like uh, brackets, utility items, clips, carabiners, uh, bag chip clips, articulated toys. You will not be able to print cosplay items on this printer. I think it's a little bit too small for that. You might be able to slice some. I'm not too much into cosplay stuff. This is where I want to talk about the cons. Earlier I filmed the worst part of the mach machine, and it's called the XY Mech Suite, I believe. And it is so annoyingly loud, it's like a jackhammer going back and forth. To me, that's terrible. I just would rather have it saved or be an option you can turn off. It does not affect your print as much as you would think. And if you are someone that's very OCD about quality, and like you need to have it, you can have it on. And that's the great thing. Another thing that bothers me is the camera is only 15 FPS. You can check your prints with that. You can't do time lapse with that. F 15 FPS, like very blocky, like that kind of motion. And another thing that I do not like to do is load filament with this. And it's very time consuming, inefficient. I miss the printer where I can shove the filament in there, get it to eject out the bottom and go. If I wear the nozzle, I wear the nozzle. I'll replace the nozzle, all right? Uh, the price of parts is a little bit pricey, but they're available and they're made by Bamboo Lab. You don't have to worry about third party. A lot of you have been waiting for is the quality of prints. There's no artifacting. It's very smooth. There's no layer shiftings like this. And I believe that's a fair assumption. Yes, it did not print the top. But overall, this quality is insane. It even has uh, words in the back. I can't read it because of the filament color. We have a crystal egg by Cinderwing 3D. And this is a 0.2 layer height. There is a uh, overhang right here. So that's where most of that is. A little bit of fuzz but other than that it's hard to tell that some things are 3d printed on this machine because it hides seams and layers so well the inside i'm guessing some of you are like well what about my toys so this is a dragon this is glow in the dark filament once again look at the horns layer height the the layer lines even at point two are almost invisible that's what's so great about the machine and the quality of this so this is one of my own designs it's a uh, wall hanger you have to shine it in the light to see the layers i wanted to leave off with saying this for the money this is the best printer you can get in 2024 if you would like more reviews please comment let me know like i said earlier in the video if you want to support me 
My Patreon is below. With the Patreon, you'll get models, or you can just support me and subscribe, and that's where you'll keep in touch. That's my honest review. Have a good printing times.